Welcome, everyone, to the Real Whovians Cast, episode 969. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I'm with Hayden. What's up, Hayden? The fat just walks away. That's right. So, the a lot of stuff has been coming out about Series 10. A lot of stuff is really... The whole season is just basically being ruined. Um, John Sims, Master Returning... David Bradley returning as the first Doctor in the finale, and the Christmas special. Um, also, and, yeah, both. both finale and Christmas special. Yeah, and, and it just, it's like, well, what is there left to spoil? And it turns out it looks like they already spoiled the Christmas special. Now, the way this is going to be done, I'm a little worried about. Now, in the past Real Beans cast, we've always said, wouldn't it be, I'm not going to say the word would be cool because that is used when things are bad, but it would be great if they could do a 12 Companions of Christmas or 12 Doctors of Christmas or whatever. And, <laughs> you know, oh, it's funny. We even said, oh, they have to do a Singing Towers for Christmas. They did that. So my the only concern that I have with this is that it looked like Matt Smith's Doctor got all the Doctors together to save Gallifrey, and that none of them knew or maybe really paid attention that the thir- you know the 12th Doctor was there at all because he, they didn't really need him to complete the equation because it was completed with the sonic screwdriver, the, the um, way to save Gallifrey. So I'm kind of like scratching my head. Like I know Capaldi helped out, but I always was under the impression that all those doctors saved Gallifrey, and then he went in there to see where they were to save them because they did reveal that someone saved that Gallifrey from being trapped in the pocket universe. Um, but now we have we're hearing that the first doctor is going to be in communication with the twelfth doctor. And now I'm getting a little worried that they're trying to make it that Capaldi is getting all the Doctors together. Because, again, when Moffat's writing Doctor Who, his Doctor is, he tries to make his Doctor like the main, main thing. And he did that already with Matt Smith by Matt Smith getting all the Doctors together. But it would make absolutely no sense if Capaldi now, because that's Moffat's Doctor now, he rewrites history and makes it like a poll we got everybody together. Because that would be really, really, that would be plot whole city, don't you think? Well, my worry is it's not going to be 12 Doctors of Christmas. It's just going to be the first Doctor. And you, you will jump back forward about four years. Is it already four years since the 50th? It's Jesus it's Christ. Years, yeah. Time flew, didn't it? Time yeah. flew since the 50th. But, but that year, there was the episode where um, the name of the Doctor, where we actually saw Clara tell the, the first Doctor which TARDIS to steal. Yeah. So my worry is now, with Moffat's final ever episode, the big Christmas whoop you do of this year, which is going to be the final thing he ever does with Doctor Who, my big worry is that he's going to make it that Peter Capaldi is the reason why William Hartnell's Doctor actually left and escaped Gallifrey in the first place. He's going to retcon it so that he's responsible for the entire cause of Doctor Who. And that's what the whole episode is going to be about, going back to when the Doctor first left and not only Clara popping up to tell him to steal the TARDIS, actually having that Clara being a character on Gallifrey, the Clara we saw being splintered throughout Gallifrey in the name of the Doctor. I feel like she's going to pop up as a different Clara that we haven't met before. And I feel like Peter Capote is going to be the one to tell <laughs> William Hartnell that you should run away from Gallifrey and steal the box. I feel like he's going to literally take the mystery out of the show in his final ever episode, which is something he's been hinting at doing ever since he first started writing the show. That is now, do, you, do you get this vibe as well from Moffat that this is something he would do? I get the vibe that, they're going to explain why Capaldi was in the time war saving. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they, and well, another thing besides that, supposedly that's what it's about, but we're also saying that when we saw Capaldi's eyes in the 50th, that he's going to regenerate a second after. 
or a couple of seconds after, no meaning, meaning that he's holding back the regeneration. So I'm kind of like, I kind of feel let down because we already did this already with the time war and, and the doctor and, and to kind of make Capaldi regeneration part of the time war thing. I think I don't, I don't really think that yeah. makes sense. I mean, I would have really, and, and people may not like what I have to say, but I would have really had Moffat clear up that he, he gets his memories back to Clara. He stops them from traveling through time. He gives the TARDIS back to Gallifrey. She goes to face the Raven. She dies. But what he doesn't, he's not aware of is that she's always been part of Missy's plan. And then next thing you know, like Captain Jack would be like, come back to life, like a <gasps> whatever. She wakes up in the nether sphere, you know, and yeah, Danny yeah. Pink is there. And Missy, I guess, as the last act to show a friendship, basically frees Clara and Danny Pink from the nethersphere. But something happens where the doctor, you know, is too used to her being a villain and turns on her, which he's not aware that she does this and then causes her to, I guess, regenerate and then be a villain more than ever. <clears throat> so I, I think I, I, that that would save really part of the future too. Master. I've got no idea what's going on with the master. If John Sims back and Missy's back, does, are we going to realize they're two different characters, or is this going to be the master at two points in his own time stream? It's going to be the master at two points in, in his her or, own time stream. So, who's going to be the master once series ten's finished? Who's going to be the current master once when series, series ten is finished? None of them, because probably Missy's going to regenerate. And I have a feeling they're setting it up for John Sim to come and take the reins again. I don't think so. I think you that. Think so? No, I don't think. Well, here's the thing. I mean, maybe Chris Chibnall would love him to be because he was with David Tennant. So that was, oh my God, you know. But I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, first of all, they just threw all our theories out the window. That and John Sim's 40, 46. 46. Right. right. But he's popular, though. He's an American. TV right now in the catch. So, I mean, he, there's demand. And Chip, Chip does like him a lot, yeah. Well, well, have you seen that new Omaze um, campaign that you can win a hey, uh, breakfast with all seven doctors? I mean, I don't know. I mean, have, you, have you seen that? The I've, advert? I've seen piece here, pieces here and there of that. The advert, it's, it's David Tennant saying, you know, enter now, you can win breakfast with all seven of us doctors and have a chat. What's funny about the video is that David Tennant's the face of a Doctor Who charity event, even though Capaldi's going to be there. Right. Is this, is this making you uh, wonder? Well, I would say, and, and this might be controversial too, because a lot of people get crazy when I say my crazy theories, but I wouldn't um, doubt seeing David Tennant return as the Doctor in a future incarnation because of Chibnall. Or something to that effect, or him appearing with the medical crisis. Church is done. Done. War yeah. Church is finished. War Church is finished, but and David Tennant is only doing Ducktales season two voiceovers. So I would really expect Chibnall to. I mean, maybe the biggest thing is you know how they had the biggest screw job in history with wrestling, with Brett the Hitman Hart and all that stuff, right? What if the, brig yeah. the biggest screw job in history with Doctor Who is that Capaldi regenerates and it's David Tennant again. And people would be like, holy, they would lose their shit, basically. Just to show that he can choose the faces again. Can you imagine? All this speculation, all this stuff about this woman being the doctor, this woman being the doctor, they've thrown everybody off. BBC coming out with an announcement, we have no intention of having a female doctor. That, I mean... And then this one, Chris Marshall, that all this stuff was nonsense because they always had intentions of bringing David Tennant back or even Matt Smith. Back. Would you, yeah. would you, would you flip your shit if David Tennant came back as a doctor? Like, I probably, I probably flip my shit because I, you know what it is? I loved David Tennant's run. He became my favorite well, doctor. David, David Tennant's what got all of us into Doctor Who more than ever. I think David yeah. Tennant's the one. 
that was for me anyway. For me, I actually went back and watched um, Partners in Crime today. Yeah. <laughs> he's, his performance, he is not just a character in Doctor Who. He is one of like the best written characters in television history. He's, right. He as a character is fantastic. Just his personality and his quirks and, oh, yes. <laughs> Alone Z. Yeah. I can, I can yes. picture it. I, oh, yes. Yeah, I know. I can picture him saying, you're the 10th Doctor. He's like, no, lucky number 13. <laughs> because <laughs> as long as he, if he was to return as the Doctor, and they say, okay, 13th Doctor, right? But as long as he didn't change his personality, as long as he was exactly 10, you know, and then he could just basically pick up where he left off, they could, I would fix the Donna thing completely and have her right away you know you know and or they could do something crazy like it's a christmas special and she's the villain she's like a rich person because he gave her a lottery ticket and she's become because she don't have any memories and then he has to fix her and then she's like you made me marry this guy you made me do all this i wouldn't have my memories i wouldn't have my senses you know but then again eventually she would join you think we'd um you think we'd pick up with uh martha and mickey and captain jack and well, not again. Um, the thing is that I don't know if somebody's stopping John Barrowman from appearing. Like, although people were like, man, and Moffat think it was him. But at the end of the day, I, I don't know really if Russell T. Davis is kind of holding back the Torchwood thing. Because he did want to go to America to do it, and when that failed, um... He might like he might have said, nah, BBC is not getting it either. I mean, because somebody was the one that was stopping John Barrowman from appearing in Doctor Who. Someone just made a decision, no, you know, they mentioned him. I mean, Capaldi mentioned Captain Jack, but in the epi- episodes, but someone is just being a douche, really. And they should just stop being a douche. Yeah, I mean, and just let him appear. Now with Chibnall. I'm pretty sure that Chibna wouldn't give a shit about the person that is putting input and say, look, I'm the show owner of Doctor Who. Um, he's appearing. And it's really too bad. Just like we heard the story that Moffat said he's leaving, he's never coming back, he's never writing for Doctor Who. But then something happens where he's like, I want a Weeping Angel story for Series 11. And supposedly he went to Chibnall and I don't think Chibnall's like biting. I think Chibnall's like, look, dude, you know, you wanted me to take over. I'm taking over and I have strict rules. No, you know, you had your time. You had plenty of time to do your stories. You're not going to do a Weeping Angel story. You're not going to do any story. I don't want you doing anything in my uh, season or even your characters, whatever. I mean, it's just, you know, Moffat had plenty of opportunities to do whatever the hell he wanted to do. And... You know, just like he tried to get Russell T. Davis' new story, and he's like, I don't understand why he don't want to write and do anything. Now he wants to do the same thing, but then not. I mean, he's trying to basically set stuff up for the next couple of years of Doctor Who, but he's not the showrunner anymore. You know, so he needs to be you imagine quiet. If, um, you imagine if Series 11, Episode 1, was John Sim versus David Tennant <laughs> back oh, in the day? People, people, people would just go ape shit. Like if you saw I think that, that would be the yeah. that's like that was the, the peak of Doctor Who was two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine. So right. you know what you think it would be a thing yeah. it would be even better if like by the end of this, the appearance of John Sim, it's revealed that he still doesn't regenerate. So the possibility is there. And then there's a reason that the doctor has to become the tenth doctor again is to deal with John Sim's master. Like that, that, that. Well, the only old. reason, yeah. I think the biggest reason why it would happen is, is because BBC knows it hasn't hit the David Tennant era in terms of ratings and in terms of, you know, sales with the show. Um, BBC knows that the fans on the comments are always going off. We want Tennant, that they know as soon as they hear anything of Tennant, the fans go nuts. And they know that if they were to bring him back, the show would make more money. And it's always about making money. And the BBC know this. So, to bring in Chris Chibnall, who obviously works on David Tennant's main program right now with him as the main star, um, and they're both leaving the show because it's the last episode tonight or was it tomorrow, yesterday or something like that. 
uh, with Broadchurch finished and Chibnall leaving Broadchurch and Tennant leaving Broadchurch and Johnson returning as the master for multiple little episodes. And we, we currently don't know who the new Doctor is, but we do know it's someone who they want to be like, David Tennant. So it kind of makes sense that if the Doctor regenerates, they, they might just go back to David Tennant to see if they can make the show be the best it can possibly be. And I don't see it going backwards. The thing is that the Doctor, it's revealed that he can become a woman. It's revealed that he could return to old faces. So what's the big deal? Would you rather the show get canceled or would you rather the show, you know, be in jeopardy of being canceled? There's nobody that they have to answer to. The, the, the sales figures alone would be up like 500%. The action figures, oh, yeah. the stuff that, I mean, they, they could, he could, Chimnall could just decide to put his own spin on all the storylines that were kind of left you know, just dangling, you know? He well, you see, wrap- like, we flipped our shit when we saw Luke Skywalker standing on the end of that uh, island. Yeah. Imagine us seeing David Tennant. It would be like Luke Skywalker returning all over again. Like, you'd, you'd see me in a Doctor Who shirt tomorrow if David oh, Tennant yeah. came back. <laughs> I know. I know. We'd be like, <laughs> fucking, we, we create, like, five new Doctor Who. There's a reason I'm the Korean Doctor Who pa- fan pages on, on Facebook. I mean, I create more problems. It's like, you know, it's, it's like it's, it goes from the end of time and then we've got the box set that we have of series five to ten. We just burn all the box sets and then put series 11 straight after the specials of 2009. <laughs> do you imagine also, do, do you imagine the, the, the possibilities? Because here's the thing. They, they said that David Tennant visited all the companions, watched all of them before he regenerated, before he went, before he saw Rose, before he went to Tars and regenerated. Do you imagine... If they just really decided to be ballsy and have like David Tennant's doctor, the one to save the ponds, and yeah. just not give a shit, just like you remember how the night doctor was like, oh, the, you know, the UK, the golden age of Britain and everything with um with the prime minister, you know, and then David Tennant like uh, <laughs> she's like she shoots down the 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 Sycorax and. And he's like, just gets her removed. He's like, I don't care about Golden Age. F it. I'm changing history. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> and it was just like, she's yeah. gone. And he didn't give a shit. And it was never even spoken again. That he just erased the Golden Age of whatever because he was just annoyed at her. So it would just be great that it would be so easy for him to just be the one to solve, you know. And then he'll show up and you'll see like Arthur Darvon and Karen Gillen. And... Like, they'd be shocked because he'd be regenerated. And meanwhile, everybody wanted to see Amy Pond with, you know, the tent. Because they had all these, remember they had all those covers, like, teasing it and stuff like that after he left. Yeah. And like, oh, my God, this would be the greatest, craziest show ever, you know? So they could, they could do so much. They could do a fan fest, Series 11, where they could even have David Tennant versus Missy, David Tennant versus John Sim. David Tennant versus like freaking the world, basically, you know, as a doctor. And then they I mean, can have that, that, then they can have that five episode arc that Matt Smith and David Tennant want to do together, where it's the 11th and the, and the 13th. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe they can even get Christopher Eccleston back, too. Maybe Chibnall could well, do the Chibnall, right thing. It's Chibnall, yeah. As long and, as we've got rid of Moffat's ego, I'd be so happy about that. <laughs> it's just, he never wanted the doctor to go against the master when it was his doctor, Matt Smith. And then the funny thing is that when his doctor was gone and Capaldi, then all of a sudden he throws the master in our face. But he should have yeah. threw the master in our face when it was Matt Smith. You know, it, it should have happened. I think the, um, the, the, dream Lord should have, the Dream Lord should have been the master. That's what Matt I say Smith. all the time. I say, oh, yeah. I would just make it that, yeah, he was and you didn't even know. And it was sort of like well, he's the we, one after yeah. Sim that he, he was kind of becoming his friend again. Before he became Missy. Like, he put him in that situation, but he didn't want him to really die. So he was giving him chances. I didn't like, I, I didn't like the fact that it was, it was about, what, four years, five years after the end of time that we saw the Master again. Well, the last time we saw the Master, he was sacrificing himself and said, get out of the way. It right. was that big epic moment. But quite a good moment, actually. Um, yeah. And then the next time he pops up, he's trying to kill everyone again and take over the Earth. It's kind of like... I, I felt like the show should have continued on the next moment after we saw the master disappear. I felt right. like they shouldn't have skipped forward and how he got out of it. 
because right. I would have liked to have seen the master actually apologizing to the doctor for the chaos that he caused over the years because well, that was the thing. He actually developed as a character, but then Moffat just pulled him right back into being insane, wanting to kill everyone again. Right. And it's well, the thing like is, the, you, can't, like you just did a cast yesterday. Um, you can't really turn the master good though. I mean, it may no, be no, not good, not good. Well. Just yeah. I wanted to see the end of John Sims master dying again and maybe something like that. It's, yeah. I, I, I always thought it was going to be a big, huge, in my eyes, since the end of time, I was always thought when we got back to Gallifrey, everything would have been in ruins and the master would be there with Rassilon and it would be this right. kind of big, we're back. But then they kind of ruined it with that stupid episode with the doctor in the old hut and stuff and, the, him killing the Time Lord. That's and, all. That's all like. Yeah, that's. That was like it, it. was really it ruined the big suspense of finding Gallifrey that episode because it was all about Clara. It was. It felt like a. It felt like a kick in the nuts to Doctor Who fans. Like you know what stuff you guys. It's, it's about Clara. It, she's my character. She's the most important woman in the galaxy. Right. Like I still can't get over how he had to make Clara the most important thing ever. Oh no. She was the one who literally is the reason for the Doctor's entire existence, basically, because she was there at every point in his life. Like, right. even he's the reason when he was a kid, when he was under the bed. And remember when she grabbed him? Yeah. And, and listen, yeah. That was literally... It, Clara's responsible for everything. And I just couldn't stand that, because it takes away the Doctor's character. Well, the, the, only actually, thing is, the only thing is, I mean, I know, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that either. But another thing was a missed opportunity, too, is because... If you've seen the Capaldi episodes with her, it looked like he was in love with her, but he didn't do anything because he was older, and that she was still in love with him as Matt Smith's doctor, even though it was Capaldi. And like him, all the stuff that he did for her, you don't just do that. I mean, he probably did it because he was in love with her. So I mean, yeah. how would that be if she's still Matt Smith? I mean, would they? Would she be the rose of Matt Smith's era if Matt Smith was still around? That they would actually be together. And I think they would. I think that that was another missed opportunity too. That you know, we, you know, because she said in interviews, I guess that when she was crying and he was regenerating, she knew he could regenerate, but she was in love with the doctor. You know, she was purely yeah. in love with the doctor, and that just ruined the it's whole. A, they did see each other. They did see each other naked in Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> and rolled around too. Which, which Clara to stuff. me was just such a, a just a boring character. I just didn't enjoy watching anything. I liked her. I just didn't like when Moffat messed her up because it seemed yeah. to me that she was great when she was with Matt Smith. But then, I thought she was great when she was the Victorian Clara. I liked the Victorian Clara that had a bit of balls about it. I didn't like the the kind of. Oh, I'm a school teacher, and the universe is great, and I teach everybody how to go to school because I'm Clara. You know what I mean? That just kind of yeah. sucks. But I like her she better became... with Matt Smith, though. I like her because Moffat kind of made her into like a pushy, ordering, dominating, and I'm like, what the fuck? Really? It's like, what is he doing? You know, like she's do, and she's ordering the doctor around and. And then she betrays the doctor, and then he's like, he's like a puppy. You know, it's like she went yeah. to throw the keys in the lava, and he's like a puppy. He's like, all right, I forgive you, let's go. It's like, what the hell? You know? Here's one thing I'm glad about this, this season. We're not getting a Dalek episode, thank God. Oh, I'm sick of those Dalek episodes. We already had the Daleks appear, though. Yeah, but that was okay because they like made fun of the Daleks. Like, I can't stand Dalek episodes because they just happen like all the time. It's like you know how it's going to end every time. Okay. You know what's going to happen. I liked the um the Davros one was okay. I didn't like the car being stuck inside a Dalek thing. That was a bit cool. Um, yeah, I like. See, I like I like Doctor Who when it's corny but tongue in cheek, like on purpose corny. Like it's so fun. It's funny in a way. Like. Russell T. Davies kind of made this, like, it's that ridiculous, it's funny kind of thing. It's like the adipose, like fat, walking fat. <laughs> like, yeah. that's actually ridiculous funny. I don't like Doctor Who um, when it's like they try to take something serious and do something to it and it ends up looking corny. Like yeah. when they put Clara inside a Dalek rolling around. Because it, that, that, that just more looks like something done very 
cheaply, and it right. looks kind of. Ridiculous. And that was done already in the Psalm of the Daleks, so it was like you kind of like yeah. going backwards, you know. I, 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 as I said the other day, I watched the one with the Vikings, um, the one Children with Maisie one. Williams. And I turned it off. And I just couldn't. I couldn't watch it. I, I didn't like the idea that the Doctor was living for like two billion years either for yeah. Clara. Remember that one where he was stuck in the inside well, the TARDIS? Well, revealed what I figured out was basically that he's only three weeks old, even though that he was in there for four and a half billion years. He only has memories of three weeks because he yeah. kept dying and recreating himself. So technically, yeah. he's only three weeks. He only has three weeks he aged. Okay. That's, that's he basically rem- it. He rem- does he remember all the other times it happened? No. Or does he only remember the last he time He only remembers the last three weeks. So every time he woke up there, it was like it was the first time. Yes. But technically, it was but four billion one, but that years one old. room, But that one room aged where he kept was it a different. It kept... Yeah. Was it a different... Every time he woke up, right, was that a different doctor consciousness? Like, was he being... like a, You know, like, if you own someone and they'd have a different consciousness to you, but it would still be your memories. Was it, a, was it just a different doctor waking up every time in there? No. Over the course I mean, of four billion years? Or was it just him waking up in the same spot? It was kind of like, it was kind of like, say you're going in a straight line, you know, and yeah. then you hit the rewind. The only difference yeah. is, is that he would punch the door, right? And then the doctor would reset it and he would go back to the loop. But only each time that he kept getting further through the door. So was it wasn't it, a different doctor. It wasn't a fake doctor. I thought back. he died. I thought every time that he got to the door, he actually died. And then a new doctor in a different time loop, like saying all time well, exists at the same not, time. See, a no, doctor that, who was a, born that was a plot hole, but, this, but it was kind of, you know how the rooms resetted? The rooms always yeah. resetted. So that's what it was. Even though yeah. he died, he resetted the whole room where he, he it didn't wasn't, remember it wasn't a new time. doctor. It wasn't like the energy. It wasn't like that, that, that they just, oh, he kept copying himself and whatever. That wasn't a copying room. It was a transmat from when he first appeared, but he basically reset the room, like the other rooms. No, but where, you kind of remember, like, you remember, you remember Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? Where it was yes, they went back in time, like, and yes. He saw himself there, but that was actually him that ha- did it before. So like, I was wondering if the doctor that did it before knocked the wall, but then another doctor kind of came in and knocked the wall and died, and then another one came and died. No, it wasn't different doctors. It was flat out him. Like, he kept paving the way to making it better. And Speaking you know, of a, a time travel theories, this is kind of on the same page. This is, this is, I know it's Doctor Who, but we'll just say time travel, it's the same thing. There's this uh, Back to the Future theory that I was looking at. That's kind okay. of the same thing, time loops. So what they were saying is, I'm guessing you've seen Back to the Future. Yeah, I've, I've actually, yeah. the first the published, first pop time I published anything, uh, I wrote to Back to the Future. I'm in Back to the Future magazine, actually, from way back. I'm in, like, oh, really? one of the last ones. I actually had a whole time travel theory when I was younger, and I put a whole thing, they put it in, in the Back to the Future magazine. So I, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Back to the Future, I, I am definitely... A huge, huge fan. All right, so again. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the theory is um, that the Marty in Back to the Future 1 is actually not the first Marty that's gone back in time. The theory is that there's, you know how Marty was kind of a rebel when he was, he would hold on to the back of police cars with his skateboard yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. The theory is that the, the Say Marty in the movie is actually Marty 4. This is the fourth time loop with Marty. No. Okay? No, this is the theory. We're going is this with the a Reddit? Is this a stupid Reddit no, thing? No, no. no it, was, it was probably done. On the, there's a full video essay on it and everything. But um, they're saying the first Marty was actually a kid who went and actually stole Doc's time machine. 
when he was just passing by. And he went back in time, and obviously because it says Doc Brown on the on the truck and everything, he, he figured out who the guy was and went and saw him. And Marty actually was permanently stuck in the 50s, and the Doc felt so guilty about this that he actually befriended the McFly family, and no. actually that's how... That's not, that's not totally, totally false. What the thing is is that Marty used to hang around with Doc because he's in the neighborhood. He thought he was cool. They did stuff together, whatever. He's doing his time machine, right? He goes back. You know, that stuff happens back to the future one. He meets Doc, and you find, and they have that friendship or whatever. And then he goes back, and then you find out that Doc knew all along, really, Marty. So the whole thing was is that Marty came to him. He didn't come to Marty. You know, because if he went to Marty, he would alter the timeline, like from the events. No, I'm just wondering. So I'm, I'm just exp- I'm explaining. I'm going to explain. Well, yeah. I'm wondering how did him and Doc become friends in the first place? Because he was a kid in the neighborhood, and he would see the Doc. That Doc was like building crazy things that would backfire. He'd go down the street. Doc Brown's thing would explode or something, and he probably thought that this is cool. And being that his parents were a bunch of freaking boring as as f and everything else and nothing else was going on in his life he decided yeah, to like yeah. befriend doc help him out work after school on projects with him you know or, or assist him and that's how they became friends and, and basically the timeline wasn't changed it was the fact that even though doc technically knew him he didn't know all the time marty came to him so you know that's the way it is and a lot of people don't understand too one of the things nobody really talks about is, well, who burned down Doc Brown's house? That he was basically, because he had a mansion and stuff, that he was basically living in his garage or, or the guest house or whatever. And basically, I surmise that basically Biff, encountering you know stuff like that, basically burned down Doc's mansion. You know? that they never really revealed. You know, they said like, you know, teenagers, like evil teenagers, whatever did it to his house, burned down his house. You could see it in Back to the Future 1 that there's an article about his mansion burned down. Um, it would make sense that it was Biff. Yeah, yeah. Because Biff is like, oh, you know, you assisted that kid or you assisted whatever and you know what, and then he got away with it, you know, and he was still a dick, you know, so. That Did you ever play sense. the Telltale games Back to the Future? I see the kids, we got it, and I seen that there was like, uh, things got altered, and there was all these Martys popping up, and he was in love with someone oh, it's else. It's a cool story, because it, it, it goes into the um, grandparents of Marty. It actually shows the grandparent, Marty's grandparents, and it shows Doc as a 20-year-old scientist in the, right. in the town of the field back when it was like a town square kind of thing, and it was smaller, and Biff's, um, uh, Biff's dad. Right. is in it and it's, it's actually a very cool story and actually kind of fits as back to the future four so I, I highly recommend playing it actually another thing is i've for the first time ever watched alien and aliens this week oh wow you never, never saw that before. oh my god no, I, never saw I finally watched them um, I'm, I'm excited for alien covenant now i think that they should have eventually they should have did a back to the future where because their actions in Back to the Future 3, Buford Mad Dog Tannen was in jail and never got married, never had kids. So by putting him in jail then, they altered Biff from being born <laughs> and basically would undo the whole Back to the Future universe. So I would have had the story continue with another trilogy, basically. You know, Every story in Back to the Future is in an alternate timeline, though, isn't it? Because when he gets back in Back to the Future 1, where his family's different, that's an alternative timeline as well, isn't it? Well, it, 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 uh, there's, there's different theories about time travel and, and different things about timelines. Back then, it wasn't that it was multiple timelines. It was the fact that it was sort of like if you're traveling in a boat and everything behind you is like shimmering like the water. And if you go back to that original point, like, and you go through it, the water's different. So it wasn't that, it was just that everything, fit, like, time fixed itself where it wasn't like he was in completely in a different 
universe. It was like he's going to have all the same memories and everything's going to happen exactly the same. The only difference is that his parents were cooler rather than, you know what I'm saying? Because, because then the picture, the picture would be altered. If, if the timeline was completely different, where everything happened differently, the picture that they took together with his brother and sister would be completely different. So it was basically fixed. You know, where because in number two, because in number two, when death changes things, it creates an alternate 1985. Wouldn't right. that 1985 in number one that Marty fixes be an alternate 1985 as well? Well, and for that reason, because that's an alternative 1985 that's split off from the original, because Marty returned home to the alternative 1985, does that mean Marty? in the original 1985 never came home and his family forever never knew what, what happened to Marty after he disappeared in the DeLorean. Well, the thing is, you, you're talking about, you're talking about different point. Yeah. You're talking about different points in time, you know, like Marty would not appear from the events of back to the future into an alternate timeline where Biff was, because it didn't happen yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, there's two alternative 1985s. The first yes, alternative I know that. 1985 with his parents, and the second one's with Biff. So when Biff changed time, Marty went to the alternative 1985, and when Marty changed time, he went to his. Not, but I'm talking about the very first 1985 and the first one before Marty leaves in the time machine. Yeah. Because Marty disappeared and he went, and in the end, let's say he went to an alternative 1985 where his parents were cooler. In that world where his parents were losers and stuff, and Marty disappeared from, does that mean Marty never came home there and his parents were forever wondering what happened to our son? No, because, again, we're not talking about the most alternate timeline theories. I mean, multiple universe. We're talking about the timeline actually changed. And that's the way it is. In other words, when, when Marty was phasing out of existence, the whole thing was is that by him phasing back, he was technically a part of that reality. Like, he was phasing yeah. out but then he phased back. So basically all the memories and all that stuff will be there after things simmer down where with his cool parents and stuff. There'll be like two memories. It'll be like that and the memories like say like Amy Pond with the cracks and there was two ones with the parents that was the actual history and then, then when the parents weren't there, which was the alternate timeline. So yeah. the doctor fixed that where it was like, you know, fine. So in Back to the Future, you know, there is no like, oh, this is this is a new timeline. It's the same timeline. Like that back then, there wasn't no real. They didn't really have the string theory, multiple timeline, multiple this universe theory. About, um, this is this is what gets me about um X Men Days of Future Past as well, because you you've seen the movie. Yeah. Wolverine goes back into the consciousness of his 1970s self. Yes, right. And then, then when he drowns. Wolverine wakes up back in the future, the changed future, right? Yes. But that means the other Wolverine woke back up in the body once his consciousness left it. Right? The, the younger Wolverine woke back up. So when it got to the year 2024 or whatever, when the new Wolverine woke up in the new timeline, what happened to the consciousness of the younger Wolverine who lived up to that point? What happened to his, his consciousness? The thing is that, that when he appears in the future, he's in the body of that Wolverine. Yeah, but and, and what happens is was everything, it's right, like this. Yeah. It's like that Wolverine lived 80s, 90s, 2000, 2020, right? Then goes to sleep and the Wolverine we know pops in the body. So basically, Professor X has to do a thing with the, with the memories because it's still in his head to merge it together. So he's still that Wolverine you know, they're both, it's like he's one person. He's complete now. See, the thing is that his body in the future, was just, everything was erased. So, like, he can't yeah. return to that one. So somehow, whatever time or whatever, put him in that reality um, of what this Wolverine does. So the two, conscious, the two conscious Wolverines merged into one when he woke back up. Yes. But the his brain was frazzled. Thing. Yeah, so why didn't he remember the, the new timeline, though? Because his, because he just got there, and it's just like he had brain damage that time when the guy shot him in the head. 
Professor X like yeah. had to basically do a little surgery there to help. So the Wolverine, the younger Wolverine who was from the new timeline, he's still in there as well? Yes. Okay. But just to clarify, Logan movie is an alternate timeline not connected to the X-Men universe. It's not connected to Days of Future Past at all because the people that wrote Days of Future Past and the X-Men showrunners have flat out said that that is not their vision of their future after all this, the hard work and dedication that they did for the X Men franchise. They don't want to have a perfect future and then four years later it goes to shit or five or six years later it goes to shit where everybody's dead. Yeah. So basically, you know, the, the idea is with all the technology and all the mutant powers, if he was, if he did have Alzheimer's, they would all know about it because they would be, a, he'd be able to see it and cure himself or whatever. So that wouldn't happen like that. But this guy, they said you had to have it as an alternate reality because this is not the reality that is the true X-Men universe. So the guy's like, okay. And basically, it also wouldn't make the, – the Logan movie doesn't make sense either because technically, you know, even if his body was dead, he's still – the healing factor is working but slower. So he would, he would probably wake up from the grave because he would be healed. Just like when he fought that Terminator Wolverine thing in the, in the Logan movie, the guy gutted him to pieces and it took him a while to heal, but he did heal. So, so it's, been like, it's, it's going to be like Superman in Justice League where he's, because right. he's in so I mean, bad, he's going to take a long yeah. time to heal. Technically, somebody gave it, the doctor gave a hint in the Logan movie that something was done to alter his healing factor. Just like in the last Wolverine movie, where they did something to stop the healing factor and that yeah, he could yeah. have something removed or he could get some tests done and he would be back to normal. If he just spent a little effing time going to the doctors to check it out because it could have been somebody put something in there to hinder it. That's so, right. Yeah. That's like, I think it's, but she did it. Something back, so how are they going to explain it? How, are they going to bring Wolverine back? If Hugh Jackman is not coming well, back? You, well, again, I know this is just you know, Doctor Who, but, but we're going to still continue on. The Hugh Jackman, I feel that he's enjoying his break, you know, and it's going to be some years, and he'll be 60 by the time he comes back, though, surely. <laughs> Listen, the whole thing is that if next year Marvel and 20th Century Fox come to an agreement and they say, okay, we're going to work together, X-Men vs. Avengers, he's definitely going to be Wolverine. He said flat out, I will only come back if there's going to be an X-Men vs. Wolverine versus Avengers. So he'll be back. He will be back if that happens. If it doesn't happen, who knows? But you know what? A lot of actors, that after a while they get big and they don't want to do sequels. And then when they get older and they find that they have no roles, they want to return to what they did. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll see him again as Wolverine. Yeah, but cool, cool. Getting back to Doctor Who, we'll finish it off now. Um, hopefully, Series 10 of Doctor Who is going to be good and the best ever. I don't really think it's going to be the best <laughs> ever for Moffat. Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to be the best ever with Moffat because, you know, I it's don't Moffitt think... He admitted, he, he admitted he's not into it like he was with Matt Smith. He admitted it, so he's not giving his best work. So he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm right for quality, all right. But meanwhile, Matt Smith is like, oh, my doctor could kick everybody's ass. It's like, you know, so. Yeah. Well, well I've actually bought, I bought the season pass on iTunes. <laughs> I bought the season already. It cost me $40 to buy the season. And I get the, uh, I don't know, it comes with, like, the episodes plus the bonus features every week. You get all that stuff in there. So Sunday morning, I'll be waiting to download the smile episode. You know what you should have bought? You should have bought the David Tennant and um, Catherine Tate audios. I don't like the audios. It, it's kind of hard. I don't. I don't really enjoy audio books. Well, with David Tennant, things. you might. Yeah, I know. To him. Just hearing him, like you know, I was he like flipping around, like you're like, oh shit, and like I tell you, I was looking at it on Amazon. It really isn't that expensive. I mean, it's like 13 bucks 
Have you listened to it? I, I'm tempted to buy it. I just, you know what it is? I've been, I've been spending a lot of money on like, hold on, like, uh, like, you, like, you like Titans, and I, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I got like everything, everything, you know, merchandise everywhere, you know, I, I, and I also have been heavily buying Doctor Who DVDs lately, like Patrick Troughton and stuff. So I just got, I got Moonbase coming Monday, but you know, and that's where my book royalties are going. <laughs> Right what's, what's going on with the um the missing episodes coming out anytime soon? Well, uh, not to mention any names, but you would have to talk to someone else about that. An expert. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think he wants to talk to me, but uh. Well, he should because you know what? Yeah. Uh, time heals all wounds, I guess. But I'm just so. saying. No, in all seriousness, I'm not. I'm not joking about the missing episodes. Have they actually had any updates on? I'm pretty episodes? sure that we're gonna find out. You know what? Is they're not announcing it now because there's too much stuff going on. There's, you know, Series 10, there's New Doctor, whatever. I'm pretty sure that when the Christmas special is over and Doctor Who is not going to be on for a little while, I'm pretty sure that, let's say in January, they'll announce episodes found like Marco Polo or the 10th Planet's okay, last yeah. part or, I mean, you know. The thing is, that if they, they obviously don't have Power of the Daleks because they wouldn't have gone through the trouble of animating it if they not actually necessarily. Had it. Not necessarily. It's all about this. So it, they could. That's a lot of know, money, though. To actually charge people to go and buy it when it's animated. People are buying it, and right. they made their money back. People are buying it. They made their money back on it from spending on the animation. So if that happens, okay, here you go. And and nobody's going to complain about it really, because people on one hand want to see animated, and then people, what what an excuse it is to make animated by doing that. So. You know, what I don't understand is I don't understand why they don't just do, you know how they did the David Tennant, um, did the Doctor Who, the Infinity Quest? It yeah, was like an animated yeah. thing. Why, why can't they just have David Tennant do animated Doctor Who? I don't understand why. I mean, maybe this, this over, is what my, this is over my there thing they're not big on animation, maybe, I guess. I don't know. This, this, this is what my thing was for years that I suggested a long time ago. Why don't they do a Doctor Who animated series, right? But every episode is a different Doctor, a Could? different Doctor story. Why can't you do the second Doctor one? Probably because they would have to spend episode. tons of money to get the actor to sign for one episode. And it would probably be better to sign them for, like, a contract. You know? Tenant would do it. Tenant would so do an animated series. Tenant would probably, probably do it, you know, just to do it. Well, we, you know, we obviously know now that within within three years we're going to get a Doctor Who movie. Chris Chibnall's going to allow a Doctor Who movie to be made. Yes. So we're finally going to get the big budget Doctor Who movie we always wanted. Yeah. Um, and if, if they do it, it'll probably be a director like Edgar Wright, who would probably direct it, or a Ryan Johnson from Star Wars: The Last Jedi. They would probably I would say be Ryan the top Johnson. Two. I would say Ryan he'd, Johnson. I think he'd love to do it. Edgar, yeah. Edgar Wright would love to do it though too. Shaun of the Dead, The World's End, Scott Pilgrim, he would... I but I think what it. they would do is I think that they would do it where he's still the Doctor related to the series, but he's so far ahead you have no idea. I just think that it would... I don't think it would matter where the Doctor is in time because it wouldn't have to be a universe-ending event. This, the movie could just be about a human who meets the doctor on a one-off event. And it right. doesn't matter where the doctor is. He just says, I am the doctor. I am an old time Lord and I can travel on time. And they travel and they just kind of give you small details about where he is in his timeline. But I don't think it matters because it's just a singular event. And that's from the point of view of the companion opposed mm -hmm. to the doctor. Right. And it can just be an event from that point of view. And, it, and then for that reason alone, it doesn't really matter where the doctor is in his timeline. Sounds good. Because I mean, if the doctor, if the doctor stopped two zombies from entering a cafe during <laughs> when he was John Pertwee, I don't think it's going to change the course of the show's history if we see that happen, like in the seventies. And that's what it would be. I think Doctor Who, if there's a movie, would probably be pretty low budget. I think that, first of all, for some reason, I envision that. Disney would get the rights to do a Doctor Who movie. Do you think so? Yes, because Disney has been playing at having Doctor Who with Disney XD, and they made 
a good amount of money and they see that as a good thing. So besides Star Wars, besides Marvel, I think that they would love to have that acquisition. Well, as I movies. think actually, I think it's pretty obvious who would have Doctor Who as a movie because it was already going to happen three years ago. And the one company that was going to have a Doctor Who movie is Warner Brothers. I, I think that's the most obvious choice because David Yates obviously is a Warner Brothers director. I would rather I would rather have a Doctor Who movie for that. Because Warner Brothers yeah. really doesn't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to DC movies. Yeah, no, no, I would prefer it. I would obviously prefer it to be at Disney, but I'm just saying Warner Brothers are linked to BBC films. Right. And it, it would make sense because of Harry Potter, which would have similar directors, um, I mean, producers as a Doctor Who film, as we already know with David Yates yeah. in the past. Right. And I know that Stephen Moffat... Um, would probably not be involved with the movie. Thank well, I gotta tell you, as much as you say that, um, if the movie is separate from the BBC, more than likely, there's a good chance Moffat would be writing the scripts for the movie because he oh, already, no. he already he, no, he's already in Hollywood. He worked with Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson. So if here's, here's some- a question for you. Here's a major question. I think everyone in the Doctor Who fan community has just forgotten about this. They made a huge deal with that video about Peter Jackson directing Doctor Who, and it yeah. meant nothing happened. What the hell happened to that? Series eleven. No, but they said it was for Moffat though. It was he was talking to Moffat. So what's going on? Well, that was the joke. Moffat was trying to get him, but I think that but he they actually well, went Peter, to New Zealand. No, well, no, actually, actually, I know what happened. Peter Jackson got the 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 right when to do this. Movie to do this Mortal Instruments thing or something? What was the thing he got? He got... He, oh, Mortal, Mortal Engines. Mortal Engines, I'm sorry. And he got... Uh, what's the name to be in it? From the Matrix. Hugo Weaving. Weaving. Yeah, Hugo Weaving. So, right there, all plans stopped, you know? Probably. Yeah, but I thought that it was like a done deal. I thought Series 10, it was absolutely going to happen. Well... We thought because that, that video uh, with Peter Capaldi, that was actually shot in New Zealand at Peter Jackson's house. They actually went that far to do yeah, the announcement video. I know. And when was that video shot? Was that like November 2015? Was it a couple of years ago? I know. And then, then they said they're going to watch Walking Dead after. <laughs> so, so, I yeah. mean... So, what about the I, Christmas special? Is that possible? Well, that is possible. It's the only thing left for him to direct. It is not. Because it is Moffat's last Doctor Who episode, I feel like it's going to be like a huge end Maybe of time. Maybe it is Peter event. Jackson. Maybe it is Peter Jackson directed it. You've you got to think that way, though, because Moffat thinks he's the biggest Doctor Who writer ever. Surely he's going to try to go out with a bang. Probably. That's why I think he's going to try to change it, that this is going to be where we find out the Doctor's name. <laughs> well, that would end the show. You can't. You can't That's Stephen that Moffat, isn't it? In Stephen Moffat's opinion, there's no Doctor Who without Stephen Moffat. I honestly, I honestly really believed that they were going to reveal that um, Susan's other grandfather is the master, because the the houses of in Gallifrey, they, you know, the Doctor's uh, son married the master's daughter, and they had a, a girl, and yeah. I feel that that you know that they just regardless of them not getting along because they would be kind of like rivals. They kind of really didn't go against each other for a while because the, the houses, meaning of the families, were married to each other, like kind of. So well, have, you ever when, thought, have you ever thought about it? What if, the, what if the master was actually the one who married the doctor's daughter? No, 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 no. They wouldn't do that. The master's the doctor's son-in-law. No, 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 they wouldn't do that. But they, I, could, I, would, I would, you know, expect if Caroline Ford appeared, you know, and I mean, that's the They've thing. They've said it's, this for years, though. It's never happened. They've always said for years she's going to come back, and she never has. Well, they, they can't wait too long, you know. I mean, this is... She's old. This, she's I'm old. not, I mean, I don't want to be, I'm not saying that. It's just that, I mean, now I know lifespan is longer, but, you know, it, it's a shame. She's old? She is old. Come on. It's a shame. It's a shame that Martha just doesn't, you know give the fans sometimes what they want. Like, just, you know, what is the problem? You know, really. You know, I mean, he like, never even said, he never even gave a tribute to um, Elizabeth Sladen, which is still kind of a bummer to me. Yeah. Mentioned the Brigadier, but 
And it's funny because I remember I, I did a cast and I was saying that, oh, who protects the companions? You know, what if like villains want to go after the companions if they're no longer companions? And I, I said, oh, I would have a thing where maybe River would be safeguarding them. Moffat already explained that now, that the Shilda is the companion protector. Which is like, uh Who's a Shilda? That's the one that you saw with the Viking episode. And that Maisie was Williams. Stupid. Maisie Williams. She's an eternal now. She's like Captain Jack. She doesn't die. So she's going to be watching oh, over the doctor's so companions, good. supposedly. Yeah. Did they say that in the show? Or was that Moffat? Yes. They said that. They said that in the show. In the, in the second episode, she appeared it. That she's going to watch over the doctor's companions. Make sure they don't get there. We'll see. Yeah. Was the Zygon episode any good in Series 9? Was that the, the first episode? part sucked. The second part was cool. But Unit looked like shit. Okay. So, I mean, you know. They gotta do Unit are a bit boring now. Huh? They're a bit boring now, you know. You know, well, not, you know what it is? He kind of makes Kate Stewart like she sucks. And I don't like that. I mean, yeah. and they kind of made too many females being leaders in Unit. Like, everything is female. Female, female, female. It's like, um, are we against men all of a sudden? Is is that it, or is, is that hip? You know, I mean, so I'm just look. I'm all for women's rights, but you know, it's just I think they're doing a little overboard with stuff. Yeah, I think Moffat. Yeah, Moffat's tried to make everyone a female, opposed to making his own original strong female I mean, character. We got fe- I find we got female directors, we got female writers, but I mean, you know, when your main villain is a female Missy and the main ice warrior villain is going to be a female and you know the general turns into a female from time lords and it's like um what's going on here and the whole the unit science advisor is osgood okay and the other science advisor is is another female it's like ah uh, what's happening like, are we, is something going on here? Because, so I think it's just, uh. Is it, is it sexist of me to say that I like John Sim as the master more? Because no. I do. You know what I mean? It's sexism. It's just, you know, you have favorites. I like John Sim better character. too. He was a great character. He's, he's my Missy's master too, man. I, I think I, Missy's too over the top sexually and attracted to the doctor where she's always making weird innuendos towards him. I don't like the sexual tension between the Doctor and the Master. I don't like that. I mean, I don't like, I like the idea that I don't like the idea that the Doctor and Master had this cheeky sexual background together. I liked the idea that the Doctor and Master were like brothers who just always were at each other's throats. That's what but I. But that's preferred. what it was. Not that yeah, they're doing that it. now. It's just they changed it's, it. Well, we, you know what it is. They they've been through a lot. Their, their planet got destroyed, but then it came back. It's like okay, you know, it's like. They were against they each other. didn't explain saves. Gallifrey coming back out of the out of the, the universe properly. They did not explain it properly. Well, he wasted it on Clara. That's the whole point. It's like well, oh. the thing I read. The thing I read today was saying that the the um the Christmas special is about the the twelfth Doctor and the first Doctor getting Gallifrey out of the bubble, and that's going to lead oh, is back. Is that what going to be? They're time. getting them out of the bubble. Okay. That they said that that's. You remember how they explained in series nine that they got out of the bubble somehow? Right. Well, apparently the Christmas special is, is William Hartnell, well, Bradley, um, what's he called? Uh, David Bradley David and Bradley. Capaldi getting Gallifrey out of the bubble. Getting them out of the bubble rather than yeah. putting them in the bubble, getting them out. Yeah. Okay. That would make sense. That would be a better storyline because it'll be like, all right. Is it going to be a 90 minute Christmas special? I don't know. It must be because it's the last one. It's got right. to be epic or something, surely. I'm sure we'll see some people pop in. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why you can't have Clara in there if he's regenerating. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Wouldn't she in, be there with, to witness it? I think she's going to be the Clara from Gallifrey from the name of the Doctor who tells him to take the box. I think that's the Clara that it's going to be. Okay. Because that Clara... that she's Clara, a time lord. Yeah. She's and a she time re- lord. That Clara. And she has regenerations too, by the way. Yeah. Which I don't want to really scare anybody, but what if the possibility is that when she regenerates or different things, like, you know, maybe she's closer to the doctor than we realize. 
Maybe she's Romana. Maybe Clara was Romana's first regeneration before she turned into um, uh, the, the, what was it was the Louise Jameson. I mean, uh, no, 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 it wasn't Louise. J- um, that's not Romana. Wasn't it? Who's Mary Louise? Tam, Mary Tam, and it was uh, Lala Ward. Yeah, Tom Baker's wife. Yes. So I mean, it could be a thing that because you know time is not in a straight line, so. It could be that she becomes Romana, or it could be that she... No, but no, but think about it, though. That was actually... That flashback was actually before... That was with the first Doctor. So it, it, it is in a straight line then, isn't it? Because well, that's... They, that's still don't they time the travel, the Time Lords? Yeah, that makes sense. If the Time Lords can time travel right, how okay. come the Doctor doesn't pop into them after the Time War? Because the, the younger versions of the Time Lords still travelled in time before the Time War. I mean, they have all these TARDISes, right? So what the hell is the deal? Why can't people be out of say, order then too? Say, say in the... See, this is what Doctor Who's good at. It explains what year it is on Earth. It never explains what year it is on other planets. Wow. <laughs> well, anyway, say um, in when the first Doctor was around, there was a time lord called um, Jiminy. And Jiminy went to the year 2050 on Earth for a coffee. How come David Tennant's doctor couldn't have gone to 2050 and had a coffee with the old Time Lord who went back there from before the Time War happened? Why can't the doctor see... Why can't the 10th doctor go see the 4th doctor before the Time War starts? Right. Makes sense. If the doctor can still travel around after the Time War, why couldn't the Time Lords still be around before the Time War started? Because... There's a lot of Time Lords and there's a lot of TARDISes, so how come they wouldn't just pop up all over the place? Exactly. Exactly. Well, I know the Time War happened, but I'm saying there's not a a direct time where they're always stuck in. So why wasn't there heaps of Time Lords just visiting the year 2015 before the Time War? It makes sense, though. It's it's true. Why ain't there? Maybe we haven't seen it yet. I mean, the Master probably went to 2015 when he was... uh, Roger Delgado. So how come in 2015, you know, Matt Smith never met up with Roger Delgado's master? Well, there is another rumor that an actor is playing Roger Delgado's master. So it's not just John Sim, it's three masters. So is the three-part, is it the finale a three-parter? Uh, I don't... It might, see, the thing is, the only record he doesn't have, right, is he never did a three-parter, right? Market. And he likes to have records, no? Well, he kind of did. The Face the Raven and the, the Gallifrey no, ones were kind of he better. didn't write that. Didn't he? he? He didn't write Face the Raven. So he can't have a three-parter. Mm-hmm. Nope. He didn't write it. He may have said, all right, put that in there and do this, but he didn't write it. So that's why. Mm. Don't, you, don't you notice how someone else did Clara's End, and that's his character? And that's why she appeared again, because he didn't get to say goodbye to his own character. So that's why Mark had pulled her out of time and did all that stuff, because it's like, well, Clara's my character, so I need to send her off. So that's why yeah. you saw her again, you know? So you would never have it where somebody else would write the end of Clara, and then you never see her That was such a bad ending. That was such a bad ending with the flying fucking cafe thing. Well, but what's worse is in the convention, she's like, oh, Clara and the show, are in trouble. And people are like, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, well, they're about, because he, you know, obviously he's his characters. He's like, wow, they don't know how to fly the TARDIS. They're breaking it. They're breaking the universe. They're going to have some problem. Uh, who, gonna... who was on the TARDIS with Clara when she flew off? I showed them. Oh, I thought it was River. Nope. So. What happened to River? River. Did you see the Husbands of River Song episode? No, I didn't watch that yeah. one. It was a Singing Towers episode. Uh, so she's done now? Well, no, they. You know, she was sad because she said this history says that the Singing Towers is the last time we're together. She was like, how, how long is a night in Derillium? And he said 24 years. So in other words, he basically retired for 24 years. They didn't go anywhere. They were husband and wife living together, doing just boring shit and just being together, enjoying life. And then she went off to the library. And then he built Nardle, a body, I guess, or whatever. And then that's what happened. Then he was miserable. And then it goes into the... Doctor um, Mysterio. And that, does that happen straight after? Doctor Mysterio is 24 years after. And then 
she goes into the library and then it's right into then it's into Doctor Mysterio. And but it's like, not exactly in Doctor Mysterio because they have a whole bunch of adventures in the normal, I guess. And then it goes. But then she the goes. So she, she she goes from the towers to the library and right. then gets sucked in the library. But then she appears in the name of the Doctor via projection. Correct. And, and the then doctor happens, says to kill herself. And then what happens after that? After after that appearance of Matt Smith. After the name of the Doctor, where she appears to Clara as a ghost, what well, happens to her? He that? told her to fade out of existence and let go because she's not really River, but she is. So she doesn't listen, and she goes back into the library. That's what it is. So she's still in the library, married so to the other guy. No, she's not married to anybody. She's in the library. Did the Doctor, did the Doctor and River have a child at the Singing Towers? Well, I don't know. Really, 24 do years. 24 really years. No, do we? A long I mean, time. That, I mean, that would make sense why she's looking at a third bed in the, uh, in, you know, the forest of the dead. What? You know, there's a third, a third bed. bed. There was two kids in, in the library, but then there was three beds. Right. So there was another kid. What's that? Yeah. I think it makes sense. I think... We've never actually seen the Doctor's children. We've seen Susan, but we've never actually seen the Doctor's children, like direct kids. Right. Is that why? What, do you think he'd ever talk about his kids? Wouldn't it make sense that he would ever talk about his children? It's, you know what? I probably feel that they're in some other universe. Because, like... Like a parallel universe, he protected them in to get them out of like the time. Like, just put them in a, in a universe that the time loads don't exist. And they're just doing their thing over there because, you know, he doesn't mention it. Like Pete, like Pete, um, like Pete Tyler's universe. Right. Like I exist. would say, I would say, because back in the day, he said that the Time Lords were able to go to all the universes like that, right? Yeah. So I would say that, yeah, that he put them in another universe that the Time Lords didn't know about and that nobody could touch them. No villain could touch them. They're just, you know, doing their own thing. I mean, with the exception of the granddaughter, which um, maybe the time. No, was, my understanding I, was my understanding was when the show started, when Susan was with the doctor, the doctor's kids, Susan's parents, were still around on Gallifrey. It was. I like, don't think so. You don't think so? No, I think that it was just him and the granddaughter, and they wanted to take the granddaughter into the Time Lord Academy, but he saw what they were becoming and he didn't want them to like distort her mind because he saw what happened to the master when he looked into you know the untempered schism so he's like f this you know you're overruling me you want to take my kid you want you're my grandkid you know <clears throat> and basically he said no you're not going to take my grandkid into your teachings and i don't agree with your teachings because and, they, it destroyed his kids as well. And right, I didn't maybe, want to... Yeah, so was, and it destroyed Master and stuff, so yeah. Maybe the Doctor's son was actually the one trying to pull Susan into the Academy as well. And the Doctor no, said... No, 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 they, they weren't alive when, I think, that happened. I think it was just him and the granddaughter. But if because, they were Time Lord, surely they'd be alive. Well, not necessarily, because if you remember, they were generated 12 times, and then they just died. Right? They didn't regenerate. They just, with the exception of Rassilon, then putting into the computer. Where well, technically, could, they, 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 they have their 13 life, then they become a weird fucking zombie creature like the Master <laughs> and then die. Well, it, it's a thing where I believe that all the Time Lords were hooked up to the computer because in the Five Doctors, you know, Rassilon appeared as a ghost. It was really his consciousness. But he had no body to talk to them. So yeah. with this Gallifrey computer, he's still alive in stasis. You know, until they, until some. And I, I feel that they did this because if there was a time war, which they knew there was going to be one, they could always give him regenerations again, and they could bring them back. And that's exactly what they did with Rassilon. They took his friggin' coffin. That, that they preserved the body and they gave him regenerations and then he was leader again. So I, I think that they did that with all the time lords. That they, I think they kept them in stasis. You know? It's, it's, it's interesting, but like, mm, 
there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of possibilities with the time lords. I think. Um, I think the whole thing was the twelve generations was a political thing, where they says, "All right, we we got to put a limit on this." Just like you know, you know, just like you population know, control. Like you got to you, social so security, you get a sixty-five. All right, you can only regenerate twelve times, and then you get into the vault. Like your body's in the vault, and well, we need no, to but they did because if you remember, it was it was a literal thing. The body couldn't regenerate because remember Matt Smith's doctor actually needed physical energy to actually get more regenerations. <laughs> No, it was a thing where when, when he was poisoned, it was too, he could not regenerate because it was too far gone. But it's not that, they, that the body can't handle it. It's, I mean, maybe some people said that in the past, but it was a thing that they get a whole cycle. Like for you to get another cycle of regeneration, you would have had to do something amazing like St. Gallifrey or something. So the master had got a whole new cycle of regenerations in the time war and he ran away. So, and he's the first one to regenerate beyond his limits. So um, it's not impossible that that's happened. So the doctor got a whole cycle now, or I don't know, many cycles. Um, I think it's just a political thing. Cause when they talk, when they were talking about in the end of time, they said that time modes are dying and being reborn over and over again forever. Meaning that they're not going to be able to stop regenerating. They're going to constantly regenerate forever. So that was the thing where it's never going to end the war. That's where Asalan was talking about with them. So that was the thing that they put limits on regenerations before, but that was a political mandate. And now they probably signed a bill that there's unlimited regenerations. Yeah. And there's stuff that Neil Gaiman said about you can only, the body can only take. It's a new body every time you regenerate. So that's my thing with. Because you know how, um, again, with the, the consciousness thing, when the doctor dies, right, and regenerates, right. does he actually, his consciousness dies as well? He actually, say the doctor is, a, every time he regenerates, is actually like a new person being born, and all he has when he's reborn is his memories. It's just a new man with the memories of the old guy. Like, does the doctor, say the tenth doctor is his actually own person with the memories of the nine other doctors. Does, when the tenth doctor died, does that person actually die physically and no. and spiritually no it's so it's the same guy with the same, same memory same, it's same memory it's sort of like say you woke up today right yeah now last night you had all your memories right and whatever way you moved we were in last night maybe you were angry and you said when i wake up i'm gonna freaking go and tell this person off i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that right and you go to bed it's like you're regenerating right you wake up you have a different perspective. You know, maybe you're feeling healthy. Maybe you feel the, the sun is shining. You want to do different things than you thought last night, right? So it's sort of like him going to sleep and waking up, like us. Only difference is that, you know, after regenerating, his memories are kind of, you know, hazy, you know, until he gets the regeneration cycle done. But, you know, he looks different. You know, he feels different because he just regenerated. And he's ready to take on the world like that energetic thing. And instead of going to, let's say, Scaro or something and telling Davros off or something or seeing if Davros died with the, the regeneration Daleks, he decides to, you know, go to Earth and pick up this new companion that's like 20 years old, whatever. You know, it's like, so it's just a fresh perspective on things, you know? But it's still with the same conscious being. Yeah. The same person, dude. Same person, same memories. It's just that he has different personality and different, yeah. like you know, different personality and different features. You know, he's the same person. Though. He's still, in other words, even though he has different personality, he's still a good guy. He still has the heart. He still cares about people. You know, he's not different in that sense. Where he's going to destroy people. Now, the Valyard thing is a different story. But they, Valyard, they've, never, they've never explained the Valyard thing. Well, they kind of did, actually. Did they? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you listen to the Big Finish I've audios... Seen the, I've seen the Trial of the Time Lord. No, there was, say, a, there was a Big Finish audio called the Trial of the Valyard. Okay. And they basically, in their idea, saying that the Valyard was made from the doctor's body or DNA or something and 
that they just cooked them up to be the greatest weapon or whatever. So the way I always get, saw it in the trial of the Time Lord, the way they explained it in that was that he was the thirteenth Doctor. Who well, went no, no, there. no, no. He said he, he is the Doctor somewhere between his twelfth. And final. Now, back then, there was only thirteen. There's only um, twelve regenerations, which thirteen incarnations, twelve regenerations. But now's perspective is that he could regenerate possibly unlimited. So it could be somewhere between his twelfth and seven hundred forty seventh regeneration. Because basically now he can't. It, it, he keeps regenerating. So I thought can, he just got. I thought he got twelve new regenerations in the. Christmas episode a few years ago. He didn't. It, it, it is no longer a limit, so he's got more than twelve. When did they say that? When in Kill the Moon episode, where he was talking to the guy that was about to shoot him, and he's like, "Well, if you shoot me, I can regenerate, and if you keep shooting me, I can regenerate. In fact, I could regenerate indefinitely because I probably have more than twelve. I there's probably no limit now," he said. Is that what he said directly, that there's more than 12? He said flat-out paraphrasing, but he basically said to the guy who killed the moon that he could, it's possible he could regenerate in death. So there's no stakes that the Doctor can ever die, though. <laughs> well, yes. If he's about to regenerate and they shoot him like the Impossible Ash, then he can't come back. You know. That's Interesting. Yes. So my theory for the Christmas special is that it's going to be the the twelfth Doctor and the first Doctor trying to fix Gallifrey, and Omega is Omega is going to be the villain. Well, everybody wanted Omega the villain until until the BBC said that they don't have the rights to Omega. What? And, and that he's allowed to be in the K nine motion picture, but he's not allowed to be in Doctor Who. Why? Because they just didn't spend the money and they lost the rights to all of them. But it's, he's from Doctor Who. And they lost the rights to the Rani. How do you lose the rights to a character that's from that show? How do you lose episodes? But like... How do you delete episodes? This is, the, this is what we're talking about, the BBC. <laughs> How do you throw out most yeah. of Patrick Troughton's episodes... Be just for space, or you need money, and you just but how does like? Could you imagine Star Wars goes? Yeah, we're not going to have Luke Skywalker because we don't own the rights to Luke Skywalker, even though he's Again, in Star Wars. Correct. That's why George Lucas knew what he was doing. But BBC, you know, I'll delete it, burn it, what, burn they, it. They yeah, that episode to, burn it. All right, because yeah. they forgot to register the name Omega when they actually made the show. So now someone else owns the name Omega, so they can't use the name anymore. Somebody else owns the character. So someone actually bought the rights to the character. This is stupid. Dude, I'm telling you, there's a reason why the Ronnie's not in Doctor Who. But they can use it in the K9 movie. Well, the person that has the rights wants it in the K9 movie. Where the hell do you get this news from? <laughs> it's out there. They have it listed. You've got to Google it. It has it. It, it's, it gets confirmed, too. It's like, even the Ronnie, they, they, they're allowed to be in the big finish. But, you know, they just can't. It sucks, believe me, because that's who the, the person should have been that was behind Madame Gravarian and the church and all that and projected Amy Pond's ganger through outside the universe from the animated universe. It would have been But, you know, they just can't. I cannot it. see this. I can't find this Omega thing anywhere. I will get I will get it to you after this cast because I can't do it while we're talking because then I'm, my attention's going to be diverted. So Omega had a wife in the novels. There you yeah. go. K nine time quake. Yep. It's yep. not actually a real thing, is it? It is a real thing. There's actual K nine movie coming out. Yes. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Who's making somebody that's a major motion picture? And the Daleks are probably appearing in it too. By the way, 
is the Daleks so are not pro- owned by Doctor Who at all. So, so it's a proper movie. Unfortunately. Is it related to the TV series? No. Probably not. And Omega's going to be in it. Yeah. That's basically it. And the Daleks. I mean, this has been... So Bob again, Baker... Bob, Bob Baker obviously has the rights to Omega. Yes, that's what it says. He's the one that wrote... Who, who is he? The one that wrote him the first time? He wrote the three doctors. And he kept the rights um, himself. Then he was smart enough to... Nah, it's mine. Yeah. And they basically put the whole Time Lord history on Omega, and now they can't even talk about it. And he's the one that created the, 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 the way that they traveled through time with the TARDIS and all that. He invented the whole thing. And yeah. It's you would nuts. think that they would it's just get the right. That is nuts. Of course it's nuts. That's like saying they're not allowed to use the name TARDIS in Doctor Who. Yeah, this is the blue box, all right? crazy stupid isn't it it is but that's listen a lot of things in this world don't make sense and you know what i wouldn't think that a company would delete their own movies or their own tv shows but you know what they did and you know what i can't say that we don't do that here because in america they deleted a lot of johnny carson you know the tonight show episodes for no freaking reason and you know what that's a shame so, you know, it sucks, but it's happened. So, and the, this the, canine movie sounds like the worst thing I've ever heard of. Yeah. Yeah. A robot dog versus Omega. Right. We're regenerations. We're regenerations, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know how he had regeneration energy in the TV show, but he regenerated. So, yeah. There's a new clip from Smile up on the BBC. I saw it already. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I saw it. You said it came out 10 minutes ago. No. Oh, a third clip? I saw it uh, before we started the cast. Or maybe you got it late, but I saw it. Don't play it in the background because then we're going to get the flag. Oh, will we? Yeah. All right. We're going to go anyway. You can watch it. So thank Uh, you, Hayden. It's been a great cast. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, bro. Talk soon. We'll talk after the episode. Take care, Dr.